The small town of Willow Creek was the kind of place where everyone knew each other. Life was quiet and predictable, which was exactly why Jennifer and her husband, Paul, had chosen to move there. After years of living in the noisy, bustling city, they longed for peace, a place to raise their daughter, Lily, without the chaos that had consumed their lives for so long. Their new home, a large, old farmhouse on the outskirts of town, seemed perfect. It was a bit run down, but Jennifer saw potential in its charm, the original wooden floors, the wide windows overlooking the hills, and the sprawling, empty fields that Lily could play in. The house had been abandoned for years, but Jennifer and Paul weren't concerned. They planned to renovate it, make it their own, and settle into a quiet, happy life. The first few weeks in the house were everything they had hoped for. Lily loved her new room, with its big bay window and views of the forest beyond. Paul threw himself into fixing up the place, working on small repairs every weekend, while Jennifer unpacked and made the house feel like home. But soon after they moved in, strange things began to happen. It started small. Jennifer would hear faint footsteps at night when she was alone, creaking on the floorboards just outside Lily's room. She assumed it was the house settling, it was old, after all. Then, Lily began to complain about nightmares, telling Jennifer about the shadows that came into her room at night. Jennifer brushed it off as an overactive imagination. But as the days passed, the unsettling occurrences became more frequent. Objects would go missing, only to reappear in strange places. Doors would slam shut on their own, even when there was no breeze. Lights flickered at odd times, and the air in the house seemed to grow heavy, thick with something Jennifer couldn't explain. One evening, while sitting in the living room reading, Jennifer heard a loud thump coming from upstairs. She rushed up, her heart pounding, only to find Lily sitting on the floor of her room, staring at the wall. Lily? What happened? Jennifer asked, kneeling down beside her. Lily didn't answer. Her eyes were wide, unblinking, fixed on something in the corner of the room that Jennifer couldn't see. Sweetheart, are you okay? Lily slowly turned her head to face her mother, her expression blank. He says you shouldn't be here. A chill ran down Jennifer's spine. Who says that, baby? Lily blinked her eyes momentarily clearing, and she shook her head as though coming out of a trance. I don't know. Can I go downstairs now? Jennifer didn't press her further, but that night, she couldn't sleep. Lily's words haunted her. Who was he? And why did she have such a bad feeling that something, someone, was in the house with them? As the weeks went by, things grew worse. It started with Lily's behavior. She had always been a sweet, cheerful little girl, but she became withdrawn, sullen, and easily agitated. She started spending more and more time alone in her room, refusing to come out even when Jennifer or Paul called for her. She would sit for hours by the window, staring out into the woods with a vacant expression. Jennifer tried to talk to her, but Lily would only give short, cold answers. At night, the nightmares became more frequent. Lily would wake up screaming, her sheet soaked with sweat, crying about the dark man who stood at the foot of her bed. Jennifer and Paul took her to the doctor, thinking maybe the move had unsettled her, that she was just having trouble adjusting to the new house. But the doctor found nothing wrong, suggesting that perhaps it was just stress or anxiety. Still, Jennifer couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly, terribly wrong. One night, Jennifer awoke to the sound of whispering. It was faint, barely audible, but it was unmistakably coming from Lily's room. She got up, her heart pounding in her chest, and quietly made her way down the hallway. As she approached Lily's door, the whispering grew louder, and Jennifer's blood ran cold. It wasn't just one voice. It sounded like several people, all whispering at once, their voices layered and distorted, as if they were speaking through a wall of static. Jennifer pushed the door open and flicked on the light. Lily was sitting up in bed, her eyes wide and staring, her mouth moving in a rapid whisper. Lily? Jennifer's voice trembled. Sweetheart, who are you talking to? Lily stopped whispering, her head slowly turning to look at her mother. Her eyes were dark, almost black, 
and her face was twisted into an expression that wasn't her own, an expression of malice. You don't belong here, Lily said, her voice low, guttural, and wrong. Jennifer's breath caught in her throat. Lily? Lily blinked, and her face softened. Her eyes cleared, and she looked up at Jennifer, confused. Mommy? What's wrong? Jennifer pulled her daughter close, her mind racing. She wanted to believe it was just a dream, that Lily was talking in her sleep, but deep down, she knew that wasn't the case. The following days were a blur of fear and confusion. Lily's behavior grew more erratic. She would swing from moments of eerie calm to sudden outbursts of anger, throwing things across the room and screaming at Jennifer and Paul. There were times when her voice would drop into that same guttural tone, as if something else was speaking through her. Jennifer knew they couldn't stay in the house much longer. Something dark had taken hold of their daughter, and it was growing stronger. One night, after another terrifying episode in which Lily had screamed at the top of her lungs, get out. He's coming for you. Jennifer made the decision to call a priest. She didn't want to believe in the supernatural, but she was desperate. Nothing else made sense. The house was sick, her daughter was sick, and whatever was happening to them was beyond anything she could understand. Father Daniels arrived the next day, a quiet, middle-aged man with kind eyes and a calm demeanor. Jennifer and Paul explained everything to him, the strange occurrences, the changes in Lily, the whispers in the night. Father Daniels listened patiently, nodding as they spoke. When they were finished, he stood and said, I'll need to see your daughter. Jennifer hesitated, fear gnawing at her insides. Will you? Will you be able to help her? Father Daniels looked at her with a steady gaze. I'll do what I can. But if what you're telling me is true, this may be beyond a simple blessing. He went upstairs to Lily's room, where she was sitting by the window, her back to the door. The air in the room felt thick, oppressive, and cold. Lily, Father Daniel said softly, stepping inside. I'm here to talk to you. Lily didn't respond. Her gaze remained fixed on the woods outside, her body unnaturally still. Father Daniels took another step closer, pulling a small vial of holy water from his pocket. I'm here to help. At that moment, Lily's head snapped around, her eyes locking onto the priest. The blackness had returned to her gaze, and a cruel smile twisted her lips. You can't help her, Lily said, her voice deep and distorted, not her own. Father Daniels froze, his face grim. He took out a small crucifix and held it out in front of him. In the name of Christ, I command you to leave this child. Lily let out a low, guttural laugh that sent chills down Jennifer's spine. She belongs to me now. The temperature in the room plummeted, and the walls seemed to tremble. The shadows in the corners of the room grew darker, shifting and twisting as though they were alive. Lily's body convulsed, her limbs jerking violently as if something inside her was trying to break free. Get out! Lily screamed, her voice a mix of her own and something far more terrifying. He's coming for you. You can't stop him. Father Daniels began reciting a prayer, his voice strong but filled with urgency. He sprinkled holy water over Lily, but as the drops touched her skin, she shrieked in pain, thrashing wildly against the invisible force that seemed to grip her. Jennifer watched in horror as her daughter's body writhed and contorted, her eyes rolling back into her head. She wanted to run to Lily, to hold her, but something held her back, something that told her it wasn't her daughter lying in that bed anymore. The following day, Father Daniels returned with two more priests. They prepared for what would be a full exorcism, warning Jennifer and Paul that this could be a long and dangerous process. Father Daniels explained that what was inhabiting Lily wasn't just a spirit, it was something darker. A demon. The house felt suffocating, the air thick with an unnatural heaviness. Every creak of the floor, every whisper of the wind outside sent shivers down Jennifer's spine. She had barely slept, terrified of what would happen next, and haunted by the thought of what was happening to her daughter. The exorcism began just after dusk. The priests gathered in Lily's room, the air charged with an almost unbearable tension. Lily was strapped to the bed, 
her body writhing and jerking as if something was fighting to break free. Her eyes, no longer her own, were wide, black, and filled with a malevolent intelligence that chilled Jennifer to the core. Father Daniel stood at the foot of the bed, holding his crucifix high. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I command you to leave this child. Lily's body convulsed violently, her mouth stretching into a twisted grin. You can't save her, the voice rasped, guttural and inhuman. She's mine. She called me, and now I live inside her. Jennifer's breath caught in her throat. What do you mean, she called you? Lily's head snapped toward her mother, her smile widening. She wanted a friend. She wanted someone to talk to. And I came. Jennifer's heart sank as the realization hit her. Lily had been lonely since they moved into the house. She had been talking to someone, someone who wasn't there. You. Tricked her, Jennifer whispered, tears streaming down her face. The demon laughed, its voice like nails scraping across a chalkboard. She invited me in. And now I'll never leave. Father Daniels continued reciting prayers, his voice steady and firm, but the demon seemed to grow stronger with every word. The room grew colder, the walls vibrating with an unnatural energy. Lily screamed, a sound that wasn't her own, her body thrashing against the restraints. Suddenly, the lights flickered, and a low, growling sound filled the room. The shadows in the corners grew darker, shifting and swirling as though something was trying to break through. The other priests joined in the prayers, their voices growing louder as they fought to expel the entity that had taken hold of Lily. But the demon only laughed, its voice echoing through the room like a chorus of twisted, mocking voices. You think you can stop me? It hissed, its black eyes locked onto Father Daniels. I've lived here for centuries. This house. It's mine. And now, so is she. The air grew thick with the smell of sulfur, and the ground beneath them seemed to tremble. Jennifer felt as though the house itself was alive, fighting against the priest's attempts to rid it of the evil that had taken root. Suddenly, Lily's body arched off the bed, her eyes rolling back into her head as the demon let out a final, bone-chilling scream. The shadows swirled violently, and the temperature in the room plummeted even further. The priests continued their prayers, louder and more forceful, their voices cutting through the chaos. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, everything stopped. Lily's body fell limp against the bed, the room growing eerily silent. The shadows receded, and the air slowly returned to normal. Father Daniel stepped forward, his face pale and strained. He placed a hand on Lily's forehead, whispering a final prayer. Jennifer rushed to her daughter's side, her heart pounding in her chest. Lily? Lily's eyes fluttered open, her gaze dazed and confused. Mommy? She whispered, her voice small and frightened. Jennifer burst into tears, pulling her daughter into her arms. I'm here, baby. I'm here. Father Daniel sighed, wiping the sweat from his brow. It's over, he said quietly. The demon is gone. Weeks passed, and slowly, life in the house returned to normal. Lily no longer had nightmares, and the strange occurrences that had plagued their home ceased. The heavy, oppressive feeling that had filled the air was gone, and the house felt like a home again. But despite the peace that had returned, Jennifer couldn't shake the feeling that something had been left behind. She could still hear the demon's mocking laughter in her dreams, still feel its cold presence in the darkest corners of the house. One evening, as she tucked Lily into bed, she noticed something. In the corner of Lily's room, where the shadows had once shifted and danced, there was a small, faint mark on the wall, almost like a handprint. Jennifer's breath caught in her throat as she stared at it, her mind racing with fear. Lily noticed her mother's gaze and looked toward the corner. It's okay, mommy, she said softly. He's gone now. Jennifer forced a smile, but deep down, she knew that some things never truly leave. And as she turned off the light and closed the door behind her, she could swear she heard a faint whisper in the darkness. I'll be back.